寂しい」Welcome to Frightened Female. This is Crystal.、Uh, today's story was submitted by the viewer Mike V. Thank you so much for submitting this very creepy story. Again, guys, make sure you subscribe. That way you can get notification of all my new videos that come out.、Uh, but with that, let's begin. My girlfriend and I decided to go camping with our two married friends a few years back in early August. She wasn't one for the outdoors or sleeping in a tent, but I assured her that it would be lots of fun. I had most of the equipment that we needed already, except for a few odds and ends, like a lantern and some propane for the grill. My friends wanted to camp at a familiar site near a lake about three hours from our house. I had been there once. But my girlfriend had not, and it took a lot of convincing, but she started to come around and actually became excited about the trip. I even let her pick out all the food. So it was early Saturday morning when our friends arrived at our apartment in their SUV full of stuff. Hey guys, you ready to hit the open road? Darren said. I had just finished packing our last cooler while my girlfriend went over the checklist one more time. Yeah, I think we got everything. And so we were off. We drove in separate vehicles, each packed to the brim. Our car followed behind their SUV, seeing as how they were more familiar with the area than us. It took a little longer than anticipated to arrive, since we had to make a pit stop at the rest area, and Darren needed to buy some fishing bait for the next day. One thing we noticed as we pulled into the camp area that there were hardly any people around. And I thought this was strange, being that it was the first weekend in August. We only passed two cars, one of them of which was packing up to leave. Hmm, I thought. We drove further down to the more secluded spots that were closest to the lake. Finally, their SUV pulled into a nice site that was big enough for both of our vehicles. Is this a good one? he shouted. Yeah, I said, giving him the thumbs up. It was time to start unpacking. So the girls helped out with setting up the tent and collecting some kindle for the fire. We decided to use my large six person tent that was really spacious for all of us. That way we wouldn't have to deal with breaking down two tents instead of one. We dug a really nice fire pit and we lined it with rocks while lunch was being prepared. The fresh mountain air was amazing and we honestly could not have picked a better spot. We even had a full view of the lake beyond the trees. So the four of us sat down and ate our sandwiches before finally taking a stroll down the hill to the water's edge to check out tomorrow's fishing spots. So we spent a few hours hiking and roaming the beach before heading back up to our site. The sun was just beginning to set and we wanted to test out the fire pit. And just as we were in clear sight of our camping spot, We heard the low rumbling of a vehicle approaching from around the bend. Who's that? A ranger or something? My girlfriend said. As the sound grew closer, we saw the faint image of an older, beat up motorhome headed in our direction. Great, guess we're not alone out here. We crossed through the trees and up to our site, keeping our eyes on the road as the RV came closer. It was a rusty, Olive green color and looked like it shouldn't have even been running, but it was. It slowed down a bit, and as it approached our site, we saw a man and a woman. The man had a scruffy gray beard. He did a tiny wave, but didn't smile, barely even acknowledged us, and then strolled on by, only to pump the brakes, pause for a moment, and then pull directly. Into the site opposite of us. Damn it, go figure, I said. We definitely enjoyed our quiet space, but it is public grounds. Just bad timing on our part. Oh well, we just keep to ourselves. Once the sun had completely set, 
The stars were out, and our fire was ablaze and burning quite nicely. We all sat in a semicircle around the pit and took in Mother Nature. We could see the strange couple across the way preparing their fire as they went in and out of the motorhome, grabbing odds and ends. I saw the woman occasionally look in our direction, but then she quickly turned away. What the hell is on her neck? My friend asked. Look at it. What is that? And maybe it was my paranoia, but I think the woman had heard what Darren had said. She leaned over to her bearded husband, whispered something, and then headed straight toward us. She slowly walked across the road that divided our campsites, went in between our two cars, and came right up to the fire. She was very thin and wore her hair in two long braids. Her flowing floral skirt, which seemed rather tattered and aged, didn't fit the norm of typical camping attire. But the weirdest was that thing on her neck that my friend was talking about. It was a pet ferret. Who brings a pet ferret on a camping trip? I don't know. It just seemed really bizarre. Hey guys, gals, you wouldn't happen to have some extra lighter fluid, would ya? My husband left it back at the other camp we just came from. Well, I had brought an extra bottle, so I gave her the half-used bottle that we had already opened. Keep it, I said. So who's this little critter? I said, pointing to the ferret that was squirming around her neck. Oh, this is my baby, Skittles. We take him everywhere we go. So the girls got up and began petting the weasel, saying, Aw, how cute! The woman just smiled with her chipped yellow teeth, very unsightly. Well, I best be going. Oh, and I'm Joan, and that's my husband, Lenny. Thanks for the lighter fluid. We are just starving, and our fire won't stay hot for some reason. She gave us a nod and headed slowly back to her campsite. We tried to hold back our laughter as we began preparing for dinner. So we roasted hot dogs over the fire with the four new metal skewers that I had just purchased. Don't lose these guys, <laughs> they weren't cheap. As we began eating, we heard the motorhome across the way start up its engine and we all stopped to look. Are they leaving? My girlfriend asked. No, the wife wasn't in the passenger seat. She was still sitting by the fire. So the motorhome began moving very slowly, and it only covered about 15 feet, just enough to block our view of their fire pit. And then he parked and got out. Darren looked at me and said, Man, what's up with these freaks? So I didn't pay it no mind. Maybe they wanted some privacy or something. I just wanted to enjoy the night. So we had a few beers and started roasting our marshmallows soon after. The girls were talking amongst themselves and Darren and I were discussing the fishing trip for the next day. It was getting pretty late, so we decided to put the fire out and head in the tent for bed. They stayed on their side of the tent, we stayed on ours. It was quiet and peaceful, and after a bit, we had all drifted slowly to sleep. But I was awoken later to a sound that jolted me up. I clutched the flashlight next to me, but kept it turned off. Everyone else was softly snoring away. I heard crunching footsteps, very close to the tent. I listened for what felt like an eternity, and then the sound was gone. So I slowly laid back down, but my eyes were wide open, and my heart was still a little rapid. Maybe I was working myself up for nothing, and I knew it wasn't a bear. We were nowhere near bear country, but it was too loud to be a deer or a squirrel. And just as I began to calm down and set the flashlight to my side, I saw a dark shadow quickly cascade over the side of the wall of the tent. What the hell? That's it, I said out loud. I unzipped my sleeping bag, flipped on the flashlight, unzipped the front door of the tent, and 
rushed out, shining the light in all directions, behind the trees, over by our cars, around the tent, nothing. I peered over at the motorhome across the way. Their lights were out and all was silent. As I headed to the car to grab one of my fishing knives from my tackle box, I looked over to my right and I saw that our main cooler that kept our food was hanging wide open. Those bastards stole our food, I thought. I rushed over and quickly shined the light inside. Hmm, nothing was missing. So I checked our drink cooler and all of that was intact. Okay, was I losing it? Was I just having a bad dream or something? I then heard my girlfriend call for me. I obviously have woken her up. One sec, I just need to grab something from the car, I whispered. So I went and got the knife. I locked all the car doors and headed back into the tent. I wasn't gonna wake anybody. I'd tell them what happened in the morning. It took about an hour, but I finally got back to sleep. The rays from the morning sun began waking us up one by one as our tent didn't have its covered roof on top and it was very bright, almost too bright. I sat up and rubbed my eyes. Everyone began rustling when all of a sudden we heard the loud roar of the motorhome's engine fire up and within seconds the tire screeched and took off down the road. We all looked at each other puzzled. They're leaving somewhere this early? We unzipped the tent and shuffled out one by one, inhaling the fresh air. We quickly looked over at their campsite. Completely abandoned. They had left nothing. It was as if they packed up before dawn and just ditched. Strange people, we all agreed. Maybe they relocated or something. So we started another fire and began boiling our water for the coffee. I told the other three about what had happened in the middle of the night, you know, with the footsteps, the shadow, the cooler being opened. Sure you weren't dreaming, man, my friend said. Yeah, maybe you had one too many beers last night, as the girls giggled. Guys, seriously, it was freaky. I had to go get my knife. Well, I'm not sure they were convinced, but I know what I had heard and seen. So we all sat down in our chairs around the morning fire and sipped our coffee. I looked over at the cooking skewers that were propped up against the picnic table. There were only three. I had bought four, and I had even told them not to lose any and to keep them together. Guys, where is the fourth skewer? Those things were expensive. None of them knew. They said that they had placed theirs all in the same spot, and before bed, my girlfriend claimed that she had counted four. Whatever, I thought. Should have just used sticks from the trees anyways. I couldn't let it bother me, because today was fishing day, and we were excited to head out after breakfast. Hey, my girlfriend said. I wonder if they left that lighter fluid behind, you know, that we gave them last night. We're going to be here for two more days, so not sure if our one bottle is going to cut it. Let's go check. i got to use the restroom anyways. So the outhouses were directly past the strange couple's now empty campsite. So the girls got up, grabbed a roll of toilet paper, and headed over to the abandoned fire pit. After just a few moments, they let out a blood-curdling scream. I almost spilt my coffee. Come here! Oh my God! They screamed. Darren and I got up and rushed as fast as we could over to where the girls were. They had their hands clasped over their mouths, and they were moving further and further away from the fire pit. We approached and looked down. There, lying in steaming ashes, was my missing metal skewer that was pierced through the body of a half-eaten, flesh-rotted ferret. It took all of two seconds to look at each other and say, let's get the hell out of here. And it happened so fast, 
I could hardly remember the details. We ran back to our site. We packed the coolers, just threw them in the car, unstaked and crumpled up the tent with the blankets and pillows still inside. We grabbed everything and just shoved it in the back of the vehicles. They could keep my skewer. We weren't going to take the risk of these sickos coming back knowing where we were. Whether or not we thought they were coming back didn't matter. Last night was the ferret, and who knows what the next night could have been. So we relocated miles away to a different campground, one that was safer with more people. But never again will we go back to that lake or to that freakish campground. Thank you, Mike, for submitting that scary story. And I love to camp, but I'll tell you what, um, we've all at one point or another had that creepy camping neighbor. I have a story, and it would take me days to explain, but it um, kind of made me think of that. Um, guys, please like and subscribe to my new YouTube channel. Give it a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment. If you have a true scary story of your own that you would like me to share, please see the description box below on how to submit it. Most importantly, please be safe. Be aware of your surroundings. And remember to always lock your door. Scare you later.